Hello everyone, Colin Cadet here for Woodwork Web. Today I want to talk to you about one of my pet peeves in the workshop, and that's squares. Squares, there's all sorts of squares that we use in woodworking, and some of them work and some of them don't work. Let's look at the ones that don't work. The first square that's on my hit list of don't works is this one. And I actually paid good money for this square and it's not accurate. And now all I use it for is an expensive wall hanger. Here's why it doesn't work. Now some of you may have one of these squares or maybe more than one and maybe they do work for you. Uh, and in that case, don't change. If it works for you and you're happy with it, then don't change. Here's why this square doesn't work for me. It has steel along here, and most of these are fastened with some sort of, and you can see there's actually three uh, rivets put through this. But if you notice, the other side of this, there's a little bit of brass along the inside here, but most of this square is made of wood. And if you've looked at any of my videos and you know how much I talk about wood movement, that wood is always expanding and contracting because it's taking on and giving off water depending on the humidity that's in your workshop. And unless you live someplace where you're controlling the humidity, your workshop will be, the humidity will be rising and uh, rising and falling depending on the time of year that it is. Sometimes it'll be rising and falling a lot. And what happens with a square like this, because this is wood and it's expanding, this area in here becomes non-square. Sometimes it's too wide, sometimes it's too narrow, and that's because the wood is expanding. Despite the fact there's brass on here, it still doesn't work. And I found out this one the hard way that this one doesn't work uh, because I make musical instruments and when you're making musical instruments you need to be dead on. Not close, you need to be dead on. And this one was causing me great frustration because it wasn't square. So if you've got one of these you may want to check it to make sure that it's working and depending on the humidity you may want to keep checking and rechecking it. So this is off my list of squares to use at the moment. Now the next square that you need to be careful using is this little gem. And I see a lot of woodworkers using this little square. And this is a tri-square. It's an adjustable tri-square. And this was actually developed for carpenters for doing house construction. This square is designed to be used with this tool. These are not necessarily precision tools and the reason is because it fits nicely in a tool belt and when you're cutting 2x4s because it's adjustable and because it's got a 45 degree angle on one side and it fits in your tool belt that's what it was used for and guess what when a, when a carpenter is making a mark he's using a tool like this. This is to a woodworker this is like marking with a crowbar. You know, you can see that mark from there. But let me show you close up why you need to be careful when you're using these and you may not want to use these in some situations. Here's the little tri-square. Now if you turn it around, and probably most of you have one of these, if you turn it around you notice there's a little slot in here. But let's take it apart for a second. We'll slip the, the blade off and we'll slip this little brass piece in here and look at what's holding this little area right in here, right at the tip of my finger that little area is what holds the blade against the inside that little tiny brass nub that's what's holding this square. Now as you move this piece back and forth, as you move the, the ruler part back and forth in this piece of aluminum 
guess where it's going to wear? It's going to wear in this side right here, and this edge, and over here on this edge. And if you look inside, you can see that there's not a lot of meat, so to speak, in there. So the problem with these squares is that they, unless you put, when you put this together and, and put these, unless you crank these really hard, and even when you do that, sometimes even then, I'm having a little trouble getting this, uh, there it is there, back together, um, but even when you put these, screw these together really hard, really tight, they still sometimes are not accurate. And the reason I tell that is because when I check it with my engineer square, which we're going to look at in a minute, it's not square. Now, this square is, is a very versatile square. And there's lots of places that you could use it. But when you're in the workshop, you need to have something that you know is going to be absolutely square. And this one, depending on the brand that you have, um, this one is, some of these are sketchy because you can buy very inexpensive ones and you can buy very expensive ones. And unless you know that it's absolutely square all the time and that you, that brass has not worn, that little nub has not worn off, this is another square that you have to be careful when you're using it. Now, I see woodworkers setting up tools with feeler gauges, five thousandths of an inch, and then cutting wood, and then they check it with this, with one of these. Seriously, what is this, this side here? This is like three inches of aluminum on this side, and, and this side is variable. The, you have to be very careful with the kind of tool like this. This is designed for carpenters. If you're doing precision miter joints or precision uh, joints of anything to do in woodworking, you can't check it with a tool like this. Now I know, um, I love the tool. And I use it from time to time if I don't care how accurate it is. And you know, they come with uh, different attachments, uh, and I use them all from time to time. So the tool does have a use, you just have to be careful where you use it. So, Colin, what do you use? Well, let me show you. I use the old, reliable, been around for decades and decades, uh, an old reliable steel square and this is a 24 by 16 inch steel square I actually have two of them because sometimes I misplace where it is even a tool as big as this one then I have two smaller ones I have a, another 12 this is a 12 by 9 this is a small just this just a flat square a lot easier to handle uh, and and far more accurate always far more accurate than a tri-square. In fact, I have two of them. Uh, I bought this one at a garage sale for a dollar, and I thought for a dollar, uh, every time I misplace this one, or if I want to have two squares in different parts of the workshop, it's for a dollar, um, it was a, a, a something I couldn't turn down. So those are the two squares that I rely on. When I'm setting up equipment, I use my engineer's square and I'll show you a close-up of what an engineer's square looks like. This is my little engineer's square. I think this is a five inch by three inch and they come in different lengths. I keep threatening to get a bigger one uh, but every time I do I seem to rely on my other two. Now for setting up machinery, for setting up fences, particularly setting up jointer fences, this is the kind of tool that you need. If you're relying on one of these, uh, you're, you might not be getting absolutely accurate cuts. Because if you check it, when I check mine, and this, my tri-square was not a cheap tri-square, it was an expensive tri-square, um, but when I check it against this, it's not as accurate as a steel to steel engineer's square. They're always dead on. They'll last you a lifetime. They cost you a few dollars, but you know whenever you use it 
that whatever you're marking is absolutely accurate. Now there's other sorts of marking tools as well and again these you have to be careful with these these are construction this is this is a mate for a tri-square that's what these are for is for the construction industry if you're building houses if you're off by uh, a sixteenth or an eighth uh, in the size of a house it doesn't really matter so that's what these are for they're not for work in fine-tuned workshop one of the ones that is, is a draftman square. This one's a little hard to see because it's, it's clear, uh, but this is absolutely accurate. And this is a draftsman square, and I use it and check it against my other squares, my other equipment, to make sure that everything is the way I want it to be. So you really need to watch the kind of squares that you're using. If you need accuracy, if you're building furniture, and you want it to be accurate and you want your joints to be tight you need to be using proper equipment to do that and setting up your equipment with proper squares so that you know that your angles are 90 degrees or 45 degrees or whatever they need to be and the only way to do that is with good squares and so that concludes my rant on squares I'm pretty particular about my squares because I've made too many errors in the past making bad cuts uh, and, and relying on equipment that I thought was good when in fact it wasn't. Now I just know that a number of you are going to comment and say that you've got tri-squares and that they're dead accurate and that you've got these kind of squares and that they're working fine for you and if they are that's perfect. You don't need to change. If they're working for you stick with what you've got. If you find that these aren't working for you, now you've got some options of some other things to look at that we know will work. Steel squares in the workshop, uh, in my mind, are the way to go. And so that concludes our, my short video on squares and, and where and how to use them. Now, if you like what we're doing here, we ask you to subscribe to this YouTube channel. We also ask you to subscribe to Woodwork Web because there's always associated articles that we put on Woodwork Web with all of these YouTube videos that have different links and, and different other information, more detailed information that you may find useful. And so, I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.